This Ruger AR-556 is one of many Armalite platform rifles. It's been around since the 1960s. It shoots a varmint cartridge, not a very powerful varmint cartridge. 223 Remington is certainly a short range, for even a varmint cartridge. It's a short range cartridge compared to uh, a 22-250 or 243 Winchester that long-range long uh, varmint hunters prefer. The purpose of it, it's not an assault rifle. I've never used this for assault. I don't know anybody who has. It's designed as a target rifle. It's sold as a target rifle. It's a great self-defense self rifle. The rifle is designed for the defense of self and others. What's good about it is that you've got an adjustable stock. Why is an adjustable stock? Well, people come in uh, different sizes. Um, so if it's your, your wife or your daughter, it's a very, very easy gun to handle. It shoots a lightweight bullet as a generalization. These are Hornady Superformance 53 grain, I believe. Yeah, 53 grain VMAX loads. So it's a light bullet, it shoots it fast, but uh, it's a gas operated gun, lightweight, easy to handle, low recoil, safe to use, um, there's nothing particularly special about it. No, some jokers uh, like to say that you can get one of these or a Glock easier than you can get a book or a uh, uh, a, a snow cone. I don't know what they're talking about. No, you can't. This is Illinois. Laws vary state by state. If you want one of these, first of all, to own any firearm in Illinois, to possess any firearm, you have to fill out a form. It goes to the Illinois State Police, and they do a background check on you, and they issue you a FOID card. Firearms owner ID card that you have to have on your person. I've got mine right here. I don't go anywhere without it, and without a FOID card, you cannot possess or handle a firearm. You can't, any firearm. An adult cannot possess a firearm, cannot handle it, cannot buy ammunition without a FOID card issued by the Illinois State Police. So now you wait, you go through the background check, you get your FOID card. Now what? Can you still get one of these, like, uh, like getting a book? Uh, a comic book or a candy bar or a snow cone? No, not really. You go, you go to a gun shop, uh, you decide the model you want. This happens to be a Ruger. Um, Ruger, Smith & Wesson, Remington, Mossberg, they all make competitive models. Features vary brand by brand. Um, so, okay. Uh, do you get one? Well, in order to get a a firearm in Illinois you have to fill out the federal form 4473 and you go through not one but two background checks you already went through a background check to get your FOID card so you go through an Illinois State Police background check and also the federal NIC system background check well it's not exactly instant it's called National Instant uh, uh, criminal uh, background check. Of course, the national instant background check isn't really instant, certainly not in Illinois. Again, it varies state by state. So you fill out your form 4473. It goes through the Illinois State Police. Uh, if they've got a problem, the sale is denied. It goes through the FBI. And the, if the FBI has a problem, the sale is denied. Can you walk out of the gun shop with uh, an Armalite rifle? No, not in Illinois. There's a mandatory 24-hour waiting period for all sales, period. So, no, it's not that easy. Believe me, you can get a book a lot easier. A book or a candy bar or whatever else uh, these blithering idiots are talking about. So. You want to own this rifle in Illinois, you're going to go through a minimum 
of three background checks and it's going to take a while certainly to get your FOID card and if you don't have the FOID card on your person when you handle a firearm when you possess a firearm it's a state felony so it's no joke now this rifle certain parts of Illinois no you can't have one uh, in Cook County in Chicago these things are banned which means of course only the criminals can have them but people that want to follow the law they can't have one doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense why do people buy them they're fun to shoot if you're a farmer and you've got coyotes chewing on your livestock um, you might want to use one of these as far as self-defense uh, someone breaks into your home 911 like we are here uh, you can scream 911 all you want the ears of corn aren't listening to you certainly if you're in a rural area and you don't have a police officer on the street corner or down the street the response time whether it's rural Illinois or even Detroit you're gonna be waiting an awful long time so it's pretty simple someone's breaking into your house uh, if you're a single mother um, or if you're uh, physically weak advanced age advanced age like myself or believe me even older anyway um, why do you have one of these and uh, it, it's obvious it's self-defense now the standard capacity magazine the standard capacity magazine for an armor light rifle has been 30 rounds. It's been that way for the last 40, 45, 50 years since the 1960s. Nothing special about a 30 round magazine. It's standard capacity, it's not high capacity. Nearly 100 years ago you could get 100 round drums for uh, Thompson submachine guns. 50 round drums, 100 round drums, 30 round drums, it's not a lot. Some people claim that Oh, this is the gun that will shoot 600, uh, 500, 600, 700, 800 rounds a minute. Well, um, unless you're brain dead, you realize that isn't possible. It would take a crew and a belt feed to do that with one of these. Um, it's 30 rounds and you have to change magazines. Now, um, if, you're, if you're older, if you've got arthritis, um, if you're female, if you're physically, um, if you don't have a lot of digital dexterity, of course you want a 30 round magazine. Because uh, if the, in the unlikely event you have a problem, you don't want to fiddle around and reload. It's just, it's obvious. Captain Obvious knows this. Um, criminals, of course, don't have that problem. They shouldn't have this anyway. But, uh, but they do but not very many because it's not used in crime. It's used by a few idiots. It's used by uh, uh, what the common term is uh, radical Islamic terrorists, Muslim supremacists. Yeah, there's always nutballs, but there's been nutballs uh, since the Earth's crust cooled. So there's, uh, there's no real law that you can pass to legislate against insanity uh, that's ever worked and uh, there have been problems since there's been humans. We, we, we all know that. So, it's a, it, all you can do is take firearms away from the people that really should have them for the defense of self and others. Um, rifles aren't used very much in crime at all. If you're talking about no normal person would commit mass murder suicide which is what it ends up being, but of uh, there are abnormal people out there. No normal person would break into your home either um, if it's met by an AR-15 and you say, look, don't break in my home. But there are some people, very few people, but some people that just ain't right. It's very hard to report a crime that never happened. So you're a single mother, you're home alone, somebody's breaking into your home, and you say, look, don't break into my home. Okay, anybody uh, that can fog a mirror, they pick the wrong house, they're going elsewhere. So are you gonna file a police report? What is there to file? Uh, somebody, a break-in that didn't happen, a shooting that didn't happen, uh, somebody breaks in the door and uh, threatens somebody's life, 
of course they're going to get shot. It's just basic self-defense. But a lot of things work for that, including an AR-15. In this country, unfortunately, what we've done for years and years and years have used uh, suppression of firearms uh, to control minorities. We did it with the American Indian. We did it with Asian Americans. We've done it with blacks. That's why the Second Amendment is so vitally important. Because it's the old saying, uh, God created man, but Colonel Colt made him equal. Well, even if you're, uh, you're older, um, physically slight, um, uh, a young girl, a young single mother, a firearm makes you equal. Or physically, just due to body weight and body size, you're not. So, Ruger makes this particular model. It's uh, made for responsible law-abiding citizens, responsible firearms owners. That's who it's marketed to. It's fun for target practice. Uh, it, it has utility as a general ranch rifle. Just um, whether it whether it's coyotes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, predators to protect your property and your livestock, and it's also good for protection against human predators. In the vast majority of instances, somebody that's trained, willing to use uh, a firearm to protect themselves, uh, the crime ends very, very quickly. An armed society is a polite society. You still can't legislate insanity, uh, but Americans, by and large, are not insane. So, there's not much to it. 30, 30 round magazine is standard. It's easy to use, easy to load. It doesn't go full auto, these aren't machine guns. You've got two positions here, safe and fire and there's not much recoil. Obviously, I didn't quite get uh, the seven, eight, nine hundred rounds a minute. Those are coarse sights, the factory sights, or peeps, which are peep sights, which are good for for self-defense for very close range. Obviously, the people that that want to use this as a varmint rifle, um, they're going to use optics, and you can get far better accuracy than uh, than than the common guy like me can for the peep. But there's no problem hitting the target at self-defense ranges, which are very, very close. 35 yards would not be a self-defense range. Nevertheless, let's, let's see if we hit some paper. And it looks like we did. So... Uh, that's the end of the zombie apocalypse, but as far as uh, better accuracy, I'll take a few shots off of uh, a cradle here, obviously from a rest, whether it's, it's on your belly, uh, over a log, if you're, you're hunting coyotes, feral hogs or something like that, um, groundhogs, you can steady yourself up and you can get a lot better accuracy with optics than you can with very, very coarse peep sights. This is like an eight MOA, roughly roughly eight inches at 100 yards. So it's a very, very coarse sight.
So that's all there is to it, folks. Pretty simple. Why do you have this plastic hand guard? There's nothing really tactical about it. You have a plastic hand guard so you don't burn your hands. Why do you have a pistol grip? Most firearms uh, have pistol grips. Um, try to come up with a pistol that doesn't have a pistol grip. Where do we all think the word came from? Shotguns have pistol grips, it's not pronounced. The reason for a pistol grip is you can keep your head up and it's very, very easy to control the weapon to see what your target is, what's in front of your target, and what's behind your target. So it great, gives you great visibility and a pis pistol grip for this type of firearm is ideal. Like I said, it comes with these coarse peep sights that are actually pretty good for factory sights. But you can scope them up with red dots or optics, uh, whatever you want. But out of the box, the AR-556, it's good, it's reliable. It has nothing to do with a military weapon, which is select fire, um, shorter barrels, all kinds of th grenade launchers, uh, perhaps bayonets. Um, nobody's lobbing grenades at anybody. Uh, on the streets of the United States and there aren't too many drive-by stabbings. So the Armalite rifle, yeah, it's an old design. It's not the only semi-automatic rifle. There have been tons of them. I've been shooting semi-automatic center fire rifles for eh, 45 years plus. So it's, it's no big deal. It's unfortunately become just a political football even though um, we tried an assault weapon ban for 10 long years and it did nothing. Did absolutely nothing. Actually, crime went down. Uh, criminals don't use this, obviously. It's not something that you can uh, stick in your boot, stick in your wallet. Um, it's not that small of a firearm. It's not huge, but uh, yeah, this is not going uh, in a waistband or in a jacket pocket. So, it's much ado about nothing. Um, it's gonna continue though, there's nothing else to talk about. Attack the NRA, uh, attack law enforcement, um, attack the Second Amendment, and, and that's a shame. Over something as old and as simple and as self-explanatory as an Armalite rifle. Designed for, marketed to civilians, for target shooting, for the defense of self and others, and to protect your property against predators. Um, not just four-legged predators, on occasion, two-legged predators. So, anyway, this is not meant for my regular readers, but there's been so much nonsense over this, this old Armalite rifle. This Ruger, for the money, actually, is a pretty good one. The trigger's a little heavy, but... Uh, good magazine and it's immensely reliable so for it's for the price category where it's at 600 bucks I, th I think it's a good buy and people are buying them like crazy law-abiding American civilians have voted this to be the most popular rifle there's millions and millions of them in circulation eight nine million and that those who that's who buys it uh, law-abiding Americans who want to do some target practice, some plinking, uh, protect their property, or be ready for the defense of self and others. It's so obvious. There's no mystery to this. It's one of the most common firearms in use in the United States today, and it has been for years and years and years. I said it's an old design. It's a Eugene Stoner uh, and Jim Sullivan uh, started out, I think, in 57, 58, but uh, introduced with a lot of problems in Vietnam where it didn't do well at all because uh, the early models had horrible jamming problems and there were ammunition problems, rate of twist problems. But right now, uh, for, for a good, solid, reasonable civilian rifle, it's the top choice.